Kellyanne Conway played a crucial role in Donald Trump's election to the presidency. Now she has a high-profile job in his White House with the occasional day off. Nora O'Donnell of CBS This Morning has our Sunday profile. Last Sunday, Kellyanne Conway wasn't defending her boss, President Donald J. Trump, on TV. She was at church, attending mass with her husband, attorney George T. Conway, and their four children, along with some friends. Breakfast at a diner came next. Charlotte, what are you having today? Lumberjack? Followed by some quality family time at their northern New Jersey home. A brief return to what life used to be like. But these days, her Sunday routine is far from normal. I was surprised you have full Secret Service protection. Why? Have there been threats? Yes. I have 24-7 Secret Service protection, and... Most White House staffers do not. Do not. I find that to be very unfortunate, and obviously, if they didn't need to be there, they wouldn't be. But they do need to be there. The unusual round-the-clock protection was granted to guard President Trump's high-profile, highly controversial White House counselor. You were going to stay on the outside and make a lot of money. Outside. Why did you go inside the White House? It's a great question, Nora. Every time I see people say she sold her soul, I'm thinking, wow, I was making in one and a half speeches, one and a half speeches, so a couple hours out of my life, what I will make this year in the White House as counselor to the president. There is no den she will not go into. Of course, before she counseled President Trump, the 50-year-old attorney and businesswoman who founded her own polling company became the first woman to manage and win a presidential race. Trump, Trump. And it's because she's a woman, says Conway, that she finds herself a constant target. Take wearing that revolutionary-style coat at the inauguration. She responded to critics by saying, sorry to offend the black stretch pants women of America with a little color. Let's agree that it was silly to focus on, on your outfit. That's fine. But, okay, who, but are the black, do it. who are the black stretch pants women? Well, but the, the fact is that uh, we are... I, I, very... I'm actually honestly asking because oh. I don't know oh, what the well, answer is. Goodness. I mean, walk through an airport. Um, look at a lot of America today, they don't wear anything that snaps buttons or zippers. And that's okay. That's their business. But why criticize what I wear? Fast forward to this past Monday, when she was photographed kneeling on a couch in the Oval Office. We're constantly going back to where I sat, the presumptive negativity of what I wore or what I said. And I do think it's a triple standard. I hate to tell you. And what does that mean, a triple standard? Well, people talk about the double standard mm -hmm. of what a woman wears, not what she said or uh, what she was doing X, Y, and Z. The triple standard is, is that you know, conservative women are held to, you know, are, are just cast aside many times by traditional feminist outlets and individuals who control a great deal of the media. I mean, I can't let the haters get to me or to the president. What he's doing here is so big. Then again, for some, it's not what she's wearing or doing. It's about what she has coverage. said. I bet, I bet it's brand new information to people that President Obama had a six-month ban on the Iraqi refugee program after two Iraqis came here to this country, mm. were radicalized, and there were the master, masterminds behind the Bowling Green Massacre. As is now well known, there was never a Bowling Green massacre. She called it an honest mistake. But there was also this remark about the size of the crowd on Inauguration Day. You're saying it's a falsehood, and they're giving Sean Spicer, our press secretary, gave alternative facts to that. But the point remains Wait a minute. Alternative that there's... Facts? Alternative facts, four of the five facts he uttered. The hey, one Chuck, thing he why? got hey, right Chuck. was Zeke Miller. Four of the five facts he uttered were just not true. Look, alternative facts are not facts. They're falsehoods. Did you take a credibility hit because of what happened with the Bowling Green massacre? And what happened when you talked about alternative facts? Did that hurt your credibility? Well, I think the question presumes that it did. And so now you've got that out in the ether and the one or two... Actually, you can say no. Well... I didn't presume anything. 
what, no, what, what people should do, what I've always done with others, is look at the measure of someone's career. I've been a pollster for two decades plus, and I've worked very hard to speak candidly and truthfully. What are there, alternative facts? Well, it was alternative information and additional facts, and that got conflated. But you know, respectfully, Nora, I see mistakes on TV every single day, and people just brush them off. Everybody thinks it's just so funny that the wrong, the wrong movie was, you know, uh, heralded as the winner of the Oscars. You say, oh, well, that's just all in good fun. Things happen. Well, things happen to everyone. Conway has also taken flack for promoting Ivanka Trump's fashion line while in the White House. I fully, I'm going to just give it, I'm going to give a free okay. commercial here. Go buy it today, everybody. You can find it online. White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer would later say. She's been counseled on, on, on that subject and, uh, and that, that's it. Then this past week, the White House said Conway acted, quote, without nefarious motive or intent. Did you feel bad, bad about what happened? I always feel badly because I'm, a, you know, a Catholic guilt, mother guilt, maternal guilt, <laughs> counselor guilt. Mm -hmm. It's all there, of course. Um, of course I felt badly mm -hmm. about what happened because I am here to serve the president who's here to serve the people. And she does it from one of the most coveted offices in the West Wing, once occupied by Valerie Jarrett, Karl Rove, and former First Lady Hillary Clinton. You still got the jacket. Yes, the jacket is there. Uh, it, it may go into the, uh, well, my own private museum one day, along with <laughs> the screenshot of my cell phone, 2.30 a.m. on election night from Uma Abedin, who is calling on behalf of Secretary Clinton to call and concede to and congratulate Donald Trump on his victory. We visited her last Wednesday, the morning after President Trump's address to Congress. I am here tonight to deliver a message of unity and strength. One that seemed to mark a departure. These people are stupid. From the fiery stump style Americans have grown accustomed to. Was the president's speech a reset button? No, I think the reset button is way overdone. I mean, this is a progression. The man has been on the job for five weeks. I feel It people... was called a presidential speech, and he's been president for five weeks. What went into this speech that changed the way he's communicating? Well, first of all, I was part of the process. You, uh, others did the bulk of the work. But I will tell you that it is President Trump who was writing and rewriting entire passages. I mean, he really wanted it to be in his voice, and he works with predominantly um, brilliant speechwriter Stephen Miller, who is able to really reflect the president's tone and content. And then I think you heard uh, much of Ivanka Trump's voice in that speech. Conway says her job includes press and communications, but she also views herself as a conduit, a person who delivers advice and data to the president. What time do you get in in the morning? Um, I get here around 7.30. And what time do you leave? Um, it varies, not early. I mean, it really varies, usually not before 8, 9. And, but I have a very um, hermit-like existence here, and part of it is because of the Secret Service detail. Part of it is because if I want to go out with a friend for dinner, it's photographed and it's talked about, and it's what did she eat, what did she do, what was she wearing, and it's kind of weird. I mean, I'm not a celebrity. I'm just a pollster who happened to become a campaign manager, and I've been trying to keep a much lower profile here. Which is why, she tells us, we're seeing less of her these days. She says she's trying to cut back on screen time. People should not look at me as somebody who, quote, goes on TV. That was 5% of what I did. This idea, somebody once wrote, wrote a very flattering article and said, oh, but you know, they had to put one negative thing in there, I guess. You know, um, maybe she's not that involved in everything because she's on TV. It's like, no, I'm on TV when they're all still sleeping or watching me from bed. Mm -hmm. I'm already there. Been up for two hours doing that. Oh, and I'm there late at night. That may be just as well, because late night hasn't been kind to Conway. Not long ago, Saturday Night Live depicted her as a stalker. I'm not going to be ignored. <laughs> get it, Kellyanne. You made up a massacre. We can't have you on. But I miss the news. Okay. Uh, look, people really got outraged about that particular skit. I had people right, left, and center coming to my, quote, defense, mm -hmm. uh, saying it was over the top, and it's also, but it's also untrue. So who is Kellyanne Conway? She was raised in a blue-collar New Jersey town. Her parents divorced when she was young. 
I grew up in a house of all women. My mother, her mother, and two of my mother's unmarried sisters raised me. So these four Italian Catholic women raised me in this house. Mm -hmm. And that has benefited me tremendously because there's a certain humility that will never go away. And while President Trump uses social media as an important tool to communicate and sometimes attack, Conway tells us she considers it a cesspool, in part because of what her children see on it. Because it hurts my kids more than yeah. anything. They all read. They're all online reading. And what do they say? What do your kids say? Mom, why would people say X about you or Y about you or Z about you? I say, well, that's their unconsidered opinion. They don't want Donald Trump to be president. They don't want me to be there with him. They don't want any of us to be there. I mean, we're all criticized, and they try to pit us against each other, which is completely ridiculous. But I tell them, say a prayer for those people, because something's got to really bother you that you feel so bent on criticizing someone you hardly know mm -hmm. for doing a job that you can't begin to understand. Her husband, George Conway, who may also join the Trump administration as the nation's next solicitor general, is much more camera shy. And what do you think of watching Kellyanne through this whole thing? Oh, and she's a fighter. She's tough. Um, I, you know, don't like everything that's been said about her, to be sure, and it makes me a little angry. You know, it's part of the fact that she's there out there for the president, and they're going to attack her. They're going to attack whoever they, you know, whoever they see standing up for the president. You talk so passionately about public service and the role that, that, that you're crafting in the White House. I mean, that naturally evolves in something wanting to run yourself for office. But I feel like I'm in a really good place, Nora, as counselor to the president, to have the type of impact that usually motivates people to run for office. It's not just the fire in your belly anymore. You have to have the bile in your throat. And this is why I think many women do not run for office. Many good men and women who would bile operate. in your throat. Yeah, just to swallow so much that the country looks at you through this negative lens and corruption and cronyism and you're lying and you're you want money and you're motivated by power and and capital and, and you know the 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 money that can come to you, the wealth that can come to you. And it's just there are really good men and women out there who truly want to serve. I've worked with them in my polling business for decades. And some of them make it and some most do not. For now, the Conways will soon be packing up and heading to Washington. Although not everyone is thrilled about it. Which is what to not let mommy move to Washington? Yeah, to not let any of uh, our family move. To no, Washington. No, go Give sign her. the petition. Stop the comment. No, my wife called you. Hashtag stop She's going to live with me. Over here. Yeah, we were already talking about that. Respected by some, denounced by others, Conway says there's only one thing that could make her rethink her future alongside the man she helped make president. Is there anything that would cause you to want to leave? the White House. Yes, my children, they're having the hardest time with this. Mm -hmm. This is all new for us. This is not something I've sought. I'm not a, a famous person on TV. Yeah, it's just no. different to not have mom there. But it was a decision we made as a family, and we're going to move them here either way because I'm here to support the president.